Hi friends, it's Brie from Brie Firths Creates here to uh, show you how I made a light up haunted house card featuring the haunted house stamp and coordinating die set from LDRS Creative. So I've one, already gone ahead and colored up the haunted house and die cut it with the coordinating die set. And it's nice because the coordinating die cuts out all the windows and doors frames for you. And so I, I used the die set to also die cut the the outline um, too, so that I can trace it onto the card front, as well as die cutting it from a piece of vellum to stick behind the open window panels and door panels so that we can kind of hide the lights so that the sticker lights aren't as obvious to the card recipient. So now we're going to move on to coloring up the front card panel to create kind of a spooky night sky. So I'm using some Distress Oxide inks to create a night sky ink blend, and I'm using Salvage Pantina, Seedless Preserves, Mermaid Lagoon, and Black Suit Distress Oxide inks. And I'm starting in with the Salvage Pantina and just kind of coloring up, uh, adding color to the bottom half of the card. And now I'm coming in about midway and adding in some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide ink. I'm just going to blend those two colors together, and then I'm moving on to the Seedless Preserves. Give it kind of a nice purple tint to the night sky. And I love how the Mermaid Lagoon and Seedless Preserves blend together to create kind of a more of a deep purple shade. And then I'm coming in at the top end of the card with some Black Suit Distress Oxide ink. I'm just going to blend these four colors together. I'm kind of creating sort of an arched uh, shape with the, the night sky so that the color kind of glows around the house. So I'm just coming back in with some seedless preserves, blending the seedless preserves and black suit, and then I'm coming in with the mermaid lagoon one more time, just blending those colors out as well. And then I'm going to come in once again with the salvage pantina to finish out blending the the night sky background. I'm using a watercolor media mat to kind of contain the ink blending mess and to hold the paper still. So once I finish ink blending the background, I'm going to use a distress sprayer to kind of add uh, water sprays to create an ink resisting effect to kind of look like a speckled night sky. And I'm going to use just a plain paper towel to pick up that plain water to show off the ink resisting effect. So now it looks like random stars. So I went ahead and I die cut the um, window panel holes and the door holes using the, the coordinating die set. And I used a piece of pen, used a pencil to trace those window holes and door holes onto the card base so that we can trace the sticker outlines and things like that. And then I used a, a black Copic marker to trace the windows to kind of just give a, a dark background behind the, the uh, swinging windows and the swinging door. So I went ahead and uh, used a pencil to also add numbers to where we're going to put the the placement of the lights. So we're going to use five purple lights, and uh, I went ahead and name, numbered them one, two, three, and four into their placements. So now we're figuring out where we're going to put the battery, and we we'll want to put it a little bit away from these stickers, up towards the top right-hand corner, so it's kind of easier to get the battery in and out of the card. And I'm just using a pencil to trace the battery so that we can start building our circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and use a ruler so that I can draw somewhat straight lines. And I'm just going to use the ruler and the pencil to draw a line all the way down to number one. And then I'm going to connect the other numbers to this longer straight line. And with one line, I can connect to the third and fifth window. 
and then I can also connect to the fourth window. And this will all be my positive circuit, so I'm going to put a plus sign to indicate that these lines will be for the positive circuit. Now we can move on to building the negative circuit. So once again, I'm just going to connect to these same uh, open window panels, but using a different line because you don't want your window lines to uh, to intersect, or else your lights won't work. Your sorry, your lights will not work if they intersect. So I'm creating an L shape once again so that I can reach all of these windows, and with that bottom line, I can reach the numbers four and one. And then the second line I can reach numbers five and three, and then the top line I can reach number two. And I put a minus sign to indicate indicate that it's for the negative circuit. And these positive negatives uh, are used to line up with the positive and negative sides of the battery. So I went ahead and I created a battery holder for the battery, and so that way we can you know mark the positive and negatives, and then we can swap the battery out whenever the battery dies, but still have a light up card. So now we're just going to go ahead and actually place our pop copper tape to build our light up circuit. And I don't like how I really built uh, the circuit coming off of the battery holder. It doesn't allow you to open the, uh, the battery holder very well, so I would recommend taking it over the top and then taking a 90 degree turn towards the side so that the battery holder can and then going up so that you can fully open the battery holder panel. But this works just as well. So I'm just using copper tape to follow along those pencil lines that are already traced. Going kind of not directly over the numbers but either to the top or the bottom so that we have room to place the sticker lights. And I'm going over the the areas where the copper tape is connecting with some conductive fabric to build uh, to build the circuits where these uh, the tape has kind of been disconnected a little bit. So now we're moving on to building the negative circuit. And I'm just going to drag the copper tape all along that kind of L shape all the way down to the numbers four and one. Making sure that once again it does not touch the positive circuits. And I can use a score tool to kind of, or a bone folder to kind of flatten out that circuit to make sure that there's a proper connection between the paper and the copper tape. So I'm coming in and adding the last two pieces of the negative circuit to connect to number two and then to connect to number five and number three. And once again, I'm coming in with some conductive fabric patches just to make sure that these copper tape pieces are securely connected. So now we can add in the sticker lights. And I decided to give the windows kind of more of a twilight look with adding a purple sticker light instead of going with a normal yellow. I just figured it matched the house a little bit better and it matches the night sky background a little bit better. Give it more of a a spooky eerie feeling. And I'm coming in one more time to indicate which sides of the stickers are the positive and the negatives to make sure that it's all lining up correctly so that our circuit will work. So now as you can see when I slide the battery in the purple lights light up. So yay it works. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I've already added foam tape all around our circuit to protect the battery holder and to protect the sticker lights. So I'm going ahead and peel the backing paper off of the foam tape strips.
and I'm going to line the front card front up right over top of that card back and secure it. Now we can add the last two layers, which include the, the vellum die cut and the haunted house die cut. And I'm going to use some liquid adhesive to glue the vellum die cut to the colored haunted house die cut. Making sure not to put any glue over top of the window panels. Or door panels because we want those to open. And see how the vellum kind of hides the uh, sticker lights a little bit? But the vellum's nice because the lights shine through very brightly. The vellum's very transparent. And excuse my head while I place the haunted house on the front of the card panel. And there we have it. There's the haunted house. And when we put the battery in at the top of the card, it's kind of hard to get it into that narrow space. You can see the twilight purple windows. So the last step of the card is to add the trick or treat sentiment from the trick or treat stamp set that also came with the haunted house bundle. Uh, and a heat emboss set with white embossing powder. And now I'm going to add the fun little char coordinating characters to the card front. And I used just some lip, just some mini glue dots to kind of glue those down to the front. And I also colored these characters with my Copic markers. And I wanted to place the Frankenstein monster and some bats behind the window and door flaps so that they're kind of an extra hidden piece of fun. So now I'm just going to add the last little bit of pieces of the uh, coordinating images to the front of the card after I added some grass die cuts. And I used a white gel pen to add the extra random stars towards the night sky just for a little bit more of kind of a glowy look. And there's our card. I want to zoom in a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better. And then we add in the battery to make the windows glow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about making some circuits and some light up cards. I hope you guys come back to watch again soon. Thank you.